So, not a doctor, not a scientist, just a musician. Welcome back to Chronically Musical. My name is Alice and I am a classical musician living with two autoimmune diseases and this YouTube channel is where I share videos about both of those things. Now today we are going to talk all about FOMO. And no, not the fear of missing out, though after you see this video you may feel like you're missing out on something, I don't know. Uh, but we're talking about FOMO in the form of steroid rectal foam. Now, believe it or not, I actually have multiple videos on the subject of different rectal treatment options for IBD patients, but thanks to my stubborn little anus, I'm back on the foam. <laughs> oh man. And this time we're gonna get into a little more detail or a lot more detail and some science experiments because I'm qualified to do that. I have a master's degree, thank you very much. It's right there. But before we get into all things rectal, you gotta subscribe because where else on the internet can you find such charming and well-researched videos that have nothing to do with each other? Are you a musician? Hit subscribe. Are you chronically ill? Hit subscribe. Are you neither of those things? Hit subscribe. Really, you can't go wrong if you just hit subscribe. Okay, now that that's over with, let's get back to business. So first things first, what is rectal foam? Well, it is exactly what it sounds like. It is a foam that is administered rectally. Traditionally, or more often than not, it is for patients with ulcerative colitis because our disease activity is localized to the colon. And a lot of UC patients have inflammation near the lower part of the colon, so the anus and the rectum. And so these kinds of treatment options are really specifically targeting that lower part of the colon. The foam itself is made up of a steroid called budesonide, which can be administered rectally via enema or foam, uh, orally, which is more common for Crohn's patients, or it can actually be inhaled if you are someone who struggles with asthma and needs a steroid inhaler. There are several different brand names for this budesonide rectal foam, including Entocort and Budenofalk. Budenofalk? I don't, I don't actually know how to pronounce that, but the kind that I use it's called Eucerus, which I think is actually quite clever because it feels like it has my disease kind of hidden in the brand name, you know? The last time I used this stuff was back at the end of 2020 in the worst UC flare I've ever had. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't helpful at the time because I was using the bathroom 20 plus times a day and literally could not even keep this stuff in. I mean, I would administer it at night, I believe, because I was kind of thinking, you know, sleeping, I would, it would stay in there. Um, but when you have IBD and you're flaring, it doesn't really matter if you're asleep, you are waking up all hours of the night to go to the bathroom. So I would use the foam and then it would immediately come out. So it didn't have any positive effects for me at all at that time. Um, but thankfully, since I've been on Remicade and things are overall so much better and so much more healed internally, this has actually been helping tremendously. So now that I am a pro at the foam, after using it twice daily for the last three and a half weeks, um, I decided I needed to do a really detailed video on exactly how to use this product. So inside your box, and this is a brand new one, I want it to be, you know, true to the real experience here, um, you will find this teeny tiny little not so helpful instruction packet. Um, two canisters of your medication, just like that and then four rows of seven applicators that are all in this little holder, as well as 28 individual baggies to dispose of said applicators. Um, so this is a 28 day supply. So each of these canisters should last you two weeks. I do feel like there's sometimes extra foam left over. So if you're, you know, in a pinch and you need to like wash an applicator. I have done that before. Definitely not what you're supposed to do, but you know, if you can't get your medication refilled because your insurance is denying your prior authorization request, you got to do what you got to do. Um, I will say, I didn't mention this in my last video, but each of these applicators is actually uh, pre-lubricated, which is nice. Um, so you kind of don't have to do anything with that. Um, 
What I also didn't do in my previous video that mentioned some of these things is demonstrate how to use this product. Because how could I possibly do a PG demonstration of administering steroid rectal foam on the internet? Well, that's where these come in. So here's the thing. The average circumference of the human colon is 6.2 centimeters or 2.4 inches. So <laughs> I, uh, I went to Mr. Jeff Bezos and I purchased for $20 a set of four two inch wide clear plastic tubes. Again, not perfectly exact and actually like shockingly wide. It's kind of surprising that that's how big your colon is. Um, but we're gonna do a little, a little science experiment. And I have this all like really thought out in my head, but as you can see, I, I'm literally opening this package as we speak. Um, so, you know, I'm like, I would say cautiously optimistic, maybe 80% sure that this is gonna work out perfectly on the first try, which is maybe more than, uh, more than I really should be. Um, also, I have no idea what I'm gonna do with the other three of these, but I don't know, we'll figure it out. The reason that I spent $20 on these ridiculous little tubes is because I wanted to show you what actually happens to the foam after you administer it, because this foam actually expands. Um, but I am curious to see what happens after the foam is released. So we're gonna do this together. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill, Bill, Bill. Now obviously I can't stick the applicator just into this hole because it's way too big. Um, even though the size of your colon is over two inches, your rectum is much more narrow, um, as well as your anus, you know, you gotta kinda get in there. So I thought, again, very thought out in my head, that I could take some plastic gloves or some, um, whatever this is, gloves, and like tape them here and then just cut a little hole and make a little, make a little booty hole out of the glove. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna do that now. I'm actually gonna tape it on both sides because your colon is not open at the end. Um, so yeah, hold please. Oh my goodness, what has this channel become? Truly. God. Okay, you know, you get the idea. Now I'm just gonna cut my little, little booty, little booty hole. I think that's gonna be good. I don't want it to like come falling out. <laughs> Again, this is, you know, the least sciencey science experiment you could possibly ever do. <laughs> We've got our makeshift colon. Now we are going to prime the canister and get ready to administer this medication. So because this is a brand new box, um, again, I am, I am wasting a dose on this experiment, you guys. This is like the things I do for you, you know? Um, brand new bottle, you're gonna take off the little, there's like a safety tab right here. So you're gonna take off this little safety tab. You just kinda, yeah, you kinda just break it off. So. Step one with your brand new bottle. Then you're gonna turn the cap. See how there's like a little kind of uh, semicircle? You're gonna turn that to line up with the spout, I guess. Because this is the lock, right? If you don't have it lined up, you can't push down on the applicator head. So you gotta turn it so you can actually push it. Okay, steps one and two. Then you take one of your applicators out and believe it or not, I feel like I'm, I may be imagining this, but I think there's a curve to these. Like they don't feel perfectly straight. Like see, it feels like it's kind of, it's kind of curving. So I actually try to make it so that it's curving upwards, like kind of in a little bit of a smile. So um, I, I can kind of get up 
in there, you know what I mean? So the applicator is like curved in the direction that I'm pushing it up. <laughs> um, so I actually turn the canister upside down because this is how you administer it and then make that curved part. Again, I feel like it's an illusion and it's not actually curved, but um, I try and get it to kind of go this way, if any of this makes sense. Because see, this is how you're gonna be inserting it in to your behind. Now, after you do all of this, you're gonna shake the can. This is the priming part of it. So you're gonna shake it for about 15 seconds. If you like making love at midnight. So, primed and ready to go. Um, by the way, for your, your, oh, see, yeah, I keep t twisting it because I feel like I see the curve in a different place. Uh, your angle of entry, I learned this just kind of over the last couple of weeks. It's actually more head on than, than you realize. You don't actually have to go quite so far under. Um, I found the first several times using it to be uh, helpful to be in front of a mirror um, because your butthole isn't necessarily exactly where you think it is. <laughs> So looking for it first makes the whole thing a lot less painful. When you're kind of poking around in the wrong area, this can be really, really uncomfortable. I had some like painful moments where I was like, this doesn't feel right. It shouldn't be that hard to get in. So if you're struggling, you gotta change your angle. Um, chances are you, you just need to kind of go into it a little bit more straight ahead as opposed to like underneath, if that makes sense. Anyway, now to the fun part. So you've got your canister primed. Um, you found your point of entry. <laughs> this, oh God, I hope this works. Cause like, if so, it'd be very, very cool. It's probably just gonna like fall to the bottom and we're not gonna see anything. I'm now realizing. I should have found a tapered tube. Ugh, whatever, too late. We're gonna do our best. Okay, so you insert the applicator and you go all the way in. I mean, as far as you can comfortably, but theoretically you go until you can't go anymore. Um, then, and this is something that I did not realize the, the very first time I used it, you will push down on the applicator. Nothing gets released yet. It's not until you let go. Oh. Was that supposed to happen? I'm gonna try that again, because nothing really came out. So let's try it again. Maybe my experiment is just not gonna work. Okay, so press, release. Oh my God, nothing's coming out. Is it because it's not upside down? Ooh, that might be it. Okay, it might be because it's not upside down. <laughs> I didn't expect this to happen. I don't know what I expected, but I didn't expect this to happen. Okay. Ah, yes, okay. <laughs> wow, that was much more exciting and revealing than I thought it was going to be. Okay, so <laughs> lesson one, it's gotta be upside down for it to work, which it will be if you're putting into your body. Um, also, that's like a lot of foam that I wasn't expecting. So yeah, um, all that goes in and you actually, sorry, I'm like, I've, I've stunned myself because it was so anticlimactic at first and then it, <laughs> it worked. So um, once you've actually properly administered the foam, as you can see with this wonderful little homemade colon, you wanna keep the canister there for 15 seconds um, because this will kind of expand, especially because there's moisture in your colon, it's gonna expand. And if you just immediately pull out the applicator, you are gonna have like a little leakage um, and you may not get all of the medication out of the applicator. So you hold it there, I count to like 20 again, and then you slowly pull it out. <laughs> okay, slowly. And you take your little baggie. Last time I got these, they were blue. Take your little baggie, take your applicator, just like so. Dispose of it in the baggie, okay? Roll it up, throw it in the trash, lock your canister so you don't want this spilling out. It will, um, it will kind of foam up sometimes in the bag because there's if there's still some foam in here or in the box, 
there's still foam in here, it'll kind of expand, but that's just sort of, I think, comes with the territory. Put it back, and then like me, uh, come back and do it again in like six hours or the next day, whatever your protocol is. Um, but yeah, I would say this was a successful demonstration once we properly figured out how to do it. Uh, we had a hypothesis, we did some trial and error, and here you go, science. I am kind of curious to see what might happen to this if we let it sit for a few minutes. So I'm going to put this down and uh, come back in 10 minutes and we'll just see what happens because we are scientists here at Chronically Musical. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes. Doesn't look a whole lot different uh, from this sort of angle. Though I will say, if you get kind of a close-up look at the other side, you will see that there's some, like, bigger bubbles. I think you can see that. So I think that's probably what's going to happen everywhere over time um, as it gets kind of absorbed into your system. I think, I mean, again, this is all, like, theoretical because I have no idea what actually happens after it's administered, but... Um, now I at least know how much is going in there because there's only so much you can feel, you know? Uh, in my head, I kind of thought that this was really localized to the bottom part of the colon. It was really focused on the latter, you know, couple of centimeters. I mean, maybe an inch or two, but judging by this, like it actually covers quite a bit of ground if this is at all scientifically accurate. So um, I would say that this is probably a beneficial treatment option for a lot of UC patients, not just people who have localized inflammation in the bottom part of the colon. Anyway, there you go. That's how to use the foam. I actually have to go use it now, so um, I gotta run. But thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. As always, you can check me out on Instagram at AlicePingViola. Leave a comment below if you found this helpful or if you have any additional FOMO questions. And I'll see you guys next time several days later. Okay, so I have just gotten home from a 10 day trip to New York. It is one in the morning, so four in the morning, my internal clock time, but I have a foam update because I left the tube for the last 10 days just to see what would happen and it has expanded. So, pretty cool. <laughs> also, like how shiny I am. I'm trying a new skincare routine. Anyway, um, foam has become foamier and it looks like soap now. And I don't know if that's actually what happens inside of your intestines because this has been in here for 10 days. And at that point you would have probably absorbed it um, because your intestines are not plastic. But anyway, kind of interesting. Hope you enjoyed it.